In this video, we're going to take a look at graphical processing units and their uses. So an analogy is often used where the CPU is referred to as the brain of the computer. It effectively drives and carries out the overall operations of the system. And in the early days of computing, systems had a single CPU responsible for carrying out and controlling all instructions. As technology advanced, ever increasing demand was placed on this single central processing unit. At this point, special coprocessors began to emerge. Now a coprocessor is effectively any additional processor used for a specialized task. Its purpose is to improve the overall speed of the computer by executing concurrently or alongside with the main CPU, aided by a highly bespoke set of electronics. The most well-known type of coprocessor is the GPU, or Graphical Processing Unit. As the name suggests, GPUs were initially used for rendering graphics. As technology has advanced, the large number of cores and GPUs has been exploited to process many parallel streams of data at the same time, no matter what that data might be. The use of GPUs is no longer limited solely to graphics processing. While GPUs have thousands of stream processors, they typically tend to run slower than a standard CPU core. However, be very careful of simply saying that CPUs are faster than GPUs. CPUs are generic processing units. They're good all-rounders, whereas GPUs are highly specialized. GPUs are far superior in speed and efficiency for certain given tasks. Remember, CPUs and GPUs are designed with two different goals in mind so they have very different performance characteristics. CPUs tend to excel at performing complex operation on small data sets. Whereas GPUs tend to do better for very simple operations on very large data sets. Think of GPUs as a special purpose processor designed so a single instruction can work quickly over a large block of similar data, applying the same operation again and again. Now, this is not to say that GPUs can't perform complex numerical calculations. Indeed, they can and they do all the time. And this is a valid mark in the uh, exam. They simply excel at performing calculations on matrices, vectors and multiple data at the same time, such as rendering graphics and other such modelling tasks. So let's try and put this into some kind of context. What would be involved in rendering this 3D wireframe of a mountain landscape in full colour with realistic lighting effects? Well, the whole process is quite complex, but there's a few simple things that we can summarise. All of the segments of the image would be assigned X, Y and Z coordinates within a 3D virtual space. Every segment would be assigned a texture or a pattern. A light source would have to be assigned and given an angle, brightness and how it falls onto the wireframe. A camera source would need to be chosen for the image as well. Once all of this data has been plugged in, there would be a ton of calculations required to actually render the finished image. We'd need to do lots of arithmetic based on the X, Y and Z coordinates. We'd need to do lots of RGB calculations for the individual pixels. The X, Y, Z positions are typically stored as floating points, so there's an awful lot of floating point arithmetic needed. Once all the calculations are done, they're then going to run through every single pic pixel of the finished image from the camera's perspective and generate the 2D representation of the 3D space to display on a visual display unit. What we're talking about here is a huge number of calculations, many of which can be done in parallel. 
The result of one RGB calculation on a given pixel is not dependent on the results of any other. Typically processing might look like this with four loops. For every vertex in the geometry, do this calculation. For every single pixel on the screen, do this calculation. The mass calculations typically associated with graphical processing, SIMD, can take full advantage of parallel processing capabilities. Although a typical CPU might perform a single floating point operation quicker than a typical GPU, the GPU will be able to perform a thousand floating point operations much quicker due to the benefit of its highly bespoke design for parallel processing. From around 2006 onwards, we started to realize that this highly specialized SIMD processor technique could be utilized for operations other than simply handling graphics. This led to the birth of what some people call the general purpose computing on GPU or GP GPU. Basically any situation that required processing thousands or even millions of simple calculations over and over on multiple data points became much quicker to carry out on a GPU than a generic CPU. Some examples of computing tasks which can be performed very well on GPUs include oil exploration modeling, weather modeling, machine learning, linear algebra, large levels of statistical analysis, stock option predictions, gravitational feed theory, just to name a few. So having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key question. What are the different characteristics of CPUs versus GPUs? And what else besides graphics can GPUs be used for?